Good morning from a rainy, grey Thursday morning. It's the 22nd of February and if you're wondering why I'm sat here in my robe with no makeup on, I've decided I want to start a vlogging series. This is definitely not my comfort zone, but there is so much exciting things happening here. We are renovating the office, launching new collections, there's so much going on in the company and my life and I just want to show you a bit more real behind the scenes. So while I get ready for my day and do my makeup, I am going to tell you about what we're going to be doing today. It's a very, very busy day. So we're starting off in the office. We've got a really gorgeous project that we are presenting for today. It is a um, property in Notting Hill and the clients live in Dubai. So we're going to be presenting all the furniture and the fabrics over Zoom. Um, we sent all the boxes of all the actual finishes to them a few weeks ago so they've got everything to hand. Um, but I'm going to do it as if they were in the room so that they kind of get the same experience that all of our clients do. So that's exciting. And then after that we're going to head into London because we've already started designing the office and I'm really excited to be selecting the sanitary wear for our bathrooms today. And I'm going to go to Jessie who is my favourite supplier of sanitary wear. If you know Jessie, you'll know they're like uber luxurious. We use them on pretty much all of our bathrooms. And I wanted to use them in our office because I don't want to have a standard office. I want to kind of recreate the beautiful luxurious interiors that we do for our, our clients in their homes, create that in our office so it's representative of what we do. So I'm going to go there. They've got an amazing showroom. I'm going to show you all around it. It's got great history. Um, but before we go there, obviously I need to put some makeup on because I can't look like this for the rest of the day and actually I can't wait to get some makeup on. Um, before I do my makeup, I like to prep my skin and this little gadget is called the UFO3 by Froreo and this is like, one of my friends was using this and I noticed about four months ago that her skin looked amazing, like more moisturised. I thought she'd probably like started doing Botox or Profilo or some sneaky treatment like that. So I went up to her and I was like, like spill the beans. I need to know what is the treatment that you're doing? Why are you looking so good? And she told me about this. And I, to be honest, I didn't believe it because I was like, what can that possibly do? Like it's obviously injectables. Um, but I tried it for myself and I've been using it for a few months now. And I have to say, I'm so impressed. I don't have the best complexion and don't judge me today. I'm probably not a great, um, representative because I didn't sleep last night but um, I have quite dry skin and no matter how much moisturizer I use I just find that I can't make it more hydrated so I started using the sheet masks with the UFO 3 and what I love about them is that you can do them in like 90 seconds normally if I have a sheet mask it kind of slides down my face I feel like it's peeling off I feel really lucky that Forio actually got in touch with me um, and asked me if I wanted to work with them on YouTube and I feel so lucky because I already am familiar with their product and I only want to promote products that I can genuinely vouch for. So as I know this product and I've been using it and getting great results, it was a definite um, easy decision for me to make. This, you literally open it, put it onto the UFO3 and slide it across your face for 90 seconds. And because the UFO3 has like various settings, like it has a heat setting that really sort of makes the moisture penetrate into your skin, um, it's much more effective. I think it increases moisture and hydration levels in your skin by 126%. It's been clinically proven. Um, it gets results. It really does do what it says it does. I'm going to show you how that works now. As I didn't sleep much last night, I'm going to use the Make My Day Sheet Mask, which is hydrating. It's got hyaluronic acid and red algae. Whenever I use this one, my skin just feels much more moisturized and fresh, and I find the makeup just glides on a lot better. So to use it, you literally just put the sheet mask in that little section there and clip it on so it stays in place. You don't have to use the app with it, but I like to use the app because it kind of guides you to exactly how long you should um, use it for. Use a circular motion as you gently glide UFO across your face and neck, distributing mask essence evenly. The UFO 3 is very, very discounted, but if you use the link in the description box below, that will get you 30% off and use the code Patterson10 and that will get the first 50 customers another 10% off. So there's never been a better time to buy. 
just got my outfit on for the day. The great thing is because it's a Zoom call, you don't have to be too smart. You just need a smart jumper. So I've got a Lucy Nagel cashmere black jumper, my Celine belt, and these cargo pants, which are from Frame. And then I'm just gonna wear some trainers. If I was meeting a client in person, I would be a lot more dressed up. I feel like you can get away with that when you're tucked under a table. So I'm gonna finally put my makeup on. I am by no means a beauty influencer, but this is for those of you that have asked for it. Um, and all this makeup is genuinely used all the time, so it is quite messy. This is Hourglass. I don't know if that you can see that. And the colour is Vanish. I really like this because you can just put it on really quickly, put it straight onto the skin, and it gives quite good coverage. And I'm one of those people that multitask. I know <clears throat> everyone says multitasking isn't good, but if you're a mum and a working mum, especially, you have to multitask the whole time. So normally when I'm doing my makeup, I'll be doing calls or emails or sometimes just like watching a YouTube or listening to a podcast. I don't like just doing one thing at a time. Oh, the brush I'm using, this is Artis. Again, super dirty, don't judge but I find it really good for blending in. I think my husband bought this for me a few Christmases ago. It's just really quick. Then one of my friends got this for me for my 40th. It's the Banana Low Lighter by, I don't know, maybe it's Banana Low Lighter. I'll link it in the description box, but this has been really good because I do have quite dark circles under my eyes. I didn't sleep last night. Uh, my daughter woke me up at two and I couldn't get back to sleep until about 4.30. So under eye concealer is much needed. There's probably a lot of makeup artists out there or beauty influencers that are cringing about how I'm doing this, but this is the reality. And then I use the NARS concealer. This is medium one custard, just to cover up any other blemishes. There's not too many for me. I did um, retinol once last year and oh my God, they tell you that you're gonna purge and my skin just looked awful. And I persevered for like two or three months, but then in the end I had to give up because being 40 and having spots is not the one. You can't have spots and wrinkles at the same time. I just feel that's too unfair. And this is the speed I always do it. I'm like always rushing my makeup. I think I do the whole thing in like five minutes. Next up, blusher, Bobbi Brown. I'm using a MAC brush. Don't even know what number it is because it's all worn out. And this color is Clementine 46. Hopefully it still exists. As you can see, it's very um, used and loved. Hopefully this will put a bit of life back into my face. I've got one of those faces that is um, a resting bee face, if you know what I mean. So anything I can do like blusher that makes you look a little bit more friendly and approachable is a good thing. Now, this is my favorite lip liner. This is Chantecaille, and I'm gonna have to look really carefully because it's, again, used. The color is Nuance, and I find this is such a good color because it makes my lips genuinely look bigger. I've got really dry lips, probably should have put some moisturizer on. Um, this is, oh, this is, um, oh, what's her name? Genevieve. You know, the Jamie Genevieve, I think her name is. She's a big YouTuber. Um, I watched one of hers once and I love, her, this is the only product I've got, but I love the packaging. How nice is that with the reading? It really reminds me of the kind of makeup my mum had in like the 80s, 90s. Um, and it's got a nice little V and it's got a magnetic catch. So it's just really satisfying. And the color is 90. And I've, it's just like that perfect coral neutral slightly pink toned lipstick. Always curl my eyelashes. I've got naturally like down pointing eyelashes. My sister calls them camel lashes, which is great for camels in the desert, but not so great if you want to actually look at your, see your lashes. So curl them. I feel like it blinds me a bit when I do this. I can't be the only one. And then I saw some other makeup um, influencer on TikTok and he said that he liked to test all of them. He said the Maybelline Lash Sensational was the best one and it's super cheap and with your um, mascara 
you have to change it really regularly so I can't be bothered to get anything too expensive and I have to say I do think it's really good Last up, this Shantakai, I mean, look at the state of that. <laughs> Poor Selena, she's gonna have to do some serious editing to make this look better. I mean, look at it. Sad little eyeshadow, I really need to get some more. I do have loads of other eyeshadows, but you know, you just have your favorite. This is my favorite. So I use the little white bit under my eyebrow with my finger, of course, because I'm not a professional. And then put the brown mostly in the corner. I've got any bronzer. No, bronzer somewhere hiding in a handbag. So that will have to do. There we go. Finished look. Hopefully I look a, look a bit better. Not quite makeup artist standards, but it will have to do. Last thing, I use this perfume by Creed. This is just in the um, like travel bottle. I'll put the link in the description box of what scent I actually use. Um, it's running out. But I really love that and it's great for travel because it doesn't take up too much space. I just want a bit of perfume. I never put it all over my hair. I don't understand those influences that like spray all over their hair. It can't be good for your hair. That's it, I'm done. So let's go to work. We are now in our client meeting room. This is our existing office, not our new office. Channel regulars may recognize it from previous videos where we've presented other projects like the Chalet project. And today we have the Zoom call with our clients from Dubai for their property in Notting Hill. So we've already done all the interior architecture that all got signed off, all the hard finishes. And this is the stage where we do all the fun things like the fabrics, the furniture, how we present the fabrics is we have them all in these trays and each tray represents a different room in the property. And we have all the fabrics in there as well as the hard finishes, things like taps and stone. And it allows the client to sort of see all the materials together, how they interact, touch and feel them. So although our client's not here, they're in Dubai, they have exactly the same sets. We sent them all in nice sort of presentation boxes. So they can um, experience the same thing. They can touch and feel everything. They've already seen everything, they've already looked at it and they've told me that they love everything, which is a great start. It's actually been quite an interesting way to do this because I've never done a presentation where the clients have seen all the finishes before I present them. But actually I think it's worked quite well. Probably wouldn't do it unless we had the situation that the client was overseas. Um, but it has worked really well and they're really happy, so that's a good start. Um, but we're just going to go through the presentation, see if they've got any questions, any fabrics they might want to switch out. Um, and show them all the furniture and explain all the sort of details behind there. So I'll show you briefly all the different um, trays and then we're also going to show you some of the presentation boards that have accompanied this that we present to our clients. So we've got elevations of certain rooms, all the joinery. Um, we haven't done 3D rendered images in this project. We tend to do them on maybe much larger projects or if the client's particularly unsure. Um, whereas these clients are very on board, they sort of understand our 3D renders are quite good and they feel like that's enough for them. So let's start off in, I think we'll start off in the entrance hall, which I'm trying to work out where the tray is. This one. <laughs> so before we dive into all the fabric schemes, I just wanted to show you on screen where we start off the design process, which is something called the look, mood and feel. And here you can see the look, mood and feel board that we did for the entrance hall. And what it has is a cross section of some of the main influences in the rooms. So you've got on the left, the hard finishes of the floor. We knew we wanted to do a stone floor. Then we have a section of the type of artwork we want to do, some architectural details with the critical doors, um, some furniture with a console. We were keen to involve some arches in here to break up all the straight lines some green fabric and the joinery design. This was the inspo behind the joinery that we did just by the entrance hall door. And then we have some egomizing mirror and some of the lighting. So you can see now when we look at the mood board, 
how that translates into the next stage where we've selected the actual finishes. If we start off with the flooring, we've got two different types of um, stone here. We're gonna have a border in one of them um, and the main body in the other. And they will be divided with a small bronze trim. So you've just got a nice bit of detail there. Here we've got the wool finish, which is a lovely textured polished plaster. This is by Marmo Stucco. And then one of my favorite things in the design scheme, and this is a bit of a signature of ours, is to put wallpaper inserts into the joinery doors. And this was intentional, so it softens all those hard finishes because there's a lot of hard finishes between the stone floor and the um, textured polished um, plaster walls. Any opportunity to add more softness was welcome. Here we've got the gorgeous Roman blind that sits next to that joinery. And then you can see on the next slide how we develop that into the FF&E selection. That's all the furniture selection so that the client can see the combined effect of all those fabrics and finishes along with the furniture pieces. And then finally, we'll elevate a lot of the um, different walls so they can see how the, all of that will look um, when it all comes together. So here we've got the joinery that has that gorgeous wall covering that I mentioned and the Roman blind and um, the wall covering in that beautiful textured polished plaster and even the artwork and the cushions and it really helps them visualize the completed space. So moving on to the boys bedroom, this is a really playful bedroom. When you look at the elevations, I'm going to start with the elevations first. You can see we've done these really fun canopy beds and the idea here is that we wanted to almost give the boys the illusion of like sleeping in a tent. Again, it adds some softness. We've done panelling around the whole room and we've gone for this off-white finish. And what I love about this is that you can see the grain of the wood coming through, so it's still got lots of texture. And to add more playfulness into the room, we want to always design children's bedrooms that are gonna grow with them, so we don't wanna make them too childish. But we've really ramped up the fun in terms of pattern. So this is the Roman blind. It's gonna have this fabric on the blind itself and then a trim in a clashing pattern that will go around the perimeter. For the headboard, again, we've gone for quite a bold pattern. This is the fabric that will be on the bulk of the headboard and then it's gonna have a faux leather border. As well as doing elevations, we also like to show the client, of course, all their selection of ff &E. So here you can see all the individual pieces that we'll be going for, from the bedside tables to the custom bookshelves. I love these little Porta Romana wall lights as well that have a rattan detail, they're particularly fun. And then in between the um, beds, we're going to do a desk as well, so they can use that for studying as well as playing. Next up, we have the fabrics and finishes for the open plan living room and dining room. So you can see the color palette, which has got these gorgeous golds um, and warm, darker sort of rust colors coming through. When we look at the ff &E selection here, we can see some of the pieces that we're going for. Um, I love these stools that are gonna sit in front of the joinery. So you've got some additional seating and the coffee table, this is quite a popular concept that we do quite a lot where you've got a coffee table and then some Ottomans that tuck in. Um, so if you want to lounge and watch a movie and put your feet up, you can pull those Ottomans out, um, but then you also have lots of good circulation space when you want to put them away. I love the idea of doing the picture rail with some paintings hanging off it. It's quite an English heritage feel and our client really liked that as well. All those paintings we're gonna have custom made, we're gonna commission them so they're gonna be pieces of um, architecture or landscape surrounding the property in Notting Hill. And then we've got all the upholstery and some lighting pieces as well. Here we have the elevation of the TV unit. We've gone through quite a few different revisions, but we've settled on this one. We wanted to maximize storage, so we've got doors all the way across the bottom. We've gone for that textured plaster that we used in the entrance hall and repeating that again here, so there's like a link throughout. And then some open shelving, which is gonna have the backlit. So it creates a lovely focal point in the room. And then finally, you can see how we've brought it all together and the rendered elevations. This combines the joinery as well as the loose pieces of ff and &E and even the artwork. And I think it gives you a really good feel for what the room's gonna look like. Here we've done the gorgeous screens from our SWD collection that we'll be launching soon. And this piece of joinery here, this is quite clever. This is a piece of furniture but it integrates the air conditioning unit into it, which again is a bit of a signature chat of ours. We like to come up with clever ways to hide the air conditioning. So we're gonna move into the 
guess WC. Here is the look, mood and feel for it. You can see all the colour palette that we've gone for. The inspiration started with the Willow design from our Fermentel collection. This is a new colourway. I don't think they've even got this available on their website yet. Um, but it's a design that I really love and I love how it's got these slightly warmer pinky tones coming through. And we've matched that to the gorgeous um, tones of the stone from the Fiorda Bosco. You can see those same colours sort of echo across the wallpaper and the stone. And if we take a closer look at the finishes, these are the taps that we've gone for. These are Samuel Heath, I believe. And I love how sort of simple but elegant they are with the fluted banded detail at the bottom. We've gone for a very simple Roman blind with trim. We really didn't want to detract any attention away from the Fermentar wallpaper. I'm not going to ruin the, bo the board itself because we've got to present this to the client in a minute. Um, but you can see all that beautiful detail on those um, hand embroidered little buds there. And then if we go back to the presentation, you can see how we've brought that together on all the elevations. So you've got the vanity unit that we've designed with the beautiful wallpaper above, and we've gone for half height panelling throughout this room, just so you're really protecting that silk wallpaper in a bathroom. I've lived with silk wallpaper from floor to ceiling in my own home, and I have young children, and it's been absolutely fine. But just as a precaution, we thought we'd add the um, half height panelling in here. The last room I'm going to show you is the primary bedroom. Here we've got the look, mood and feel. And when I show you the mood board in a minute, you're going to see how that's really sort of come across into all the fabrics. The starting point here was the Branches in the Breeze wallpaper from our Fermentile collection. I'll link this in the description box. I love how it's got these beautiful soft celadon tones and it works really well in the panelling that we're going to put it in. And then if we look at the elevations, you can see why we've gone for this wallpaper. When you're choosing a chinoiserie wallpaper to go into panels, it's important that the design works with the layout of the panel. So we needed something that had a lot of vertical layout rather than horizontal where the pattern would get sort of disrupted and cut up too much. And then going back to the fabrics, we've taken all the colors from that beautiful wallpaper into the fabric. So the branch on the branches in the breeze comes out with a headboard border. And then I love to use contrast. So this is a lovely De La Cogna fabric that's got this embossed pattern. And then we brought some of the greens onto the curtain trim. So we've gone for a very simple ivory curtain, but then bring that green on through the trim. And then all the cushions, again, bring out some more of that green. It's really important that you balance the color around the room. So whilst I leave you to go and present to the client, I'm just gonna leave you with a few more of the slides that I didn't manage to cover before we have to start our presentation. These are some of the other slides in the presentation that we'll be showing them. Um, some of the bathrooms, this one's one of my favourite bathrooms that we've done. I really like mixing up tiles and marble and we're just using a few select pieces of marble like on the um, architrave to the shower and the niche above the toilet and it goes such a long way when you combine that with um, ready-made tiles. But I'll leave you to have a look at these and I'll regroup with you when I finish my presentation. We've just finished the Zoom call with our client and they absolutely loved everything. I'm delighted. I think there was literally one fabric that we're changing from all these boards. So that's a huge success. So now we've done that, I'm going to head off into London and go and source some taps. The Jesse London showroom is in Clerkenwell in a beautiful 18th century courthouse. This grade two listed building has so much incredible history. It was even mentioned by Charles Dickens in his famous novel, Oliver Twist. The ground floor, which once housed prison cells for those awaiting trial, has now been sensitively transformed into a beautiful showroom. As you walk in, you are greeted by an open plan reception area where their team greet you and will welcome you into the bar for a coffee or a drink. The bar itself is housed in the room where the prisoners would wait to hear the verdict of their trial. You can't help but marvel at all the incredible scenes these walls must have seen in the hundreds of years this building has been here. This showroom is truly unlike any other bathroom showroom I've ever visited. I felt like I was entering a five-star hotel. I couldn't wait to start exploring the showcases of the various collections they have, each of which is housed in one of the old cells. You can still see the original fabric of the building, and I pondered what the prisoners who were once held here would make of this interior designer looking at luxury bathroom fittings in their old cell. The first range I wanted to see was the Vainty Vainty collection, which is my favourite and one of their best sellers. I've specified it for lots of projects all over the world, and this is the one I had in mind for our office. 
I love the timeless quality of the design, and their showcase displays the collection in several finishes, which can completely change the look of each design. Because there is such a wide range of finishes, they can't showcase them all in the bathroom displays, but they have a wide range of different finishes that they showcase in the cabinets at the front of the showroom. Here is the Vainty Vainty Tap in the Antique Brass, which is my personal favourite finish. And here is the same tap in two of their other finishes. The darker colour completely changes the look of the tap. I like how the aged bronze highlights the texture of the fluted detail on the base and catches the light. Next up, I had a look at the Enchiso display. This award-winning collection was designed in collaboration with David Rockwell, the renowned New York architect. As with all the Jesse designs, I love how there is a strong focus on texture as well as form. The Eleganza has been one of my go-to taps for 10 years. I have it in my own home and have also used it in countless clients' bathrooms too. It really is a design classic and looks equally great in classic or contemporary interiors. Jesse described themselves as a private wellness company, as they are experts in creating a spa-like experience in your bathroom. One of the most exciting discoveries for me was that Jesse have recently launched a range of shower screen accessories. Of course, their hinges and designs aren't standard and echo the same textural elements you see in the rest of their products, so now you can match them to the rest of the brassware in your bathroom. They have several demonstration areas where you can see the wide range of jets and spa options, including lights and even speakers that can be integrated into your shower. Most importantly, the technology is simple and easy to use. To the very rear of the showroom, they have a rail of various components and designs, hanging almost like clothes in a high-end fashion boutique. Jessie is very influenced by fashion, and this is evident in their showroom fit-out. Opposite is a bar, like a jewellery showroom, where taps are neatly housed in drawers. You can put them on an interactive mat and combine different tap formations to see which one appeals to you most from the range. The largest of the Vainty Vainty tap is very contemporary and the black polished metal emphasises the texture and almost looks like glass. The mat will then play on the adjacent TV screen information and details of the design you are looking at to give a full immersive and interactive experience where you can learn more about the textures and finishes. This video shows how they create the various texture on the Anello range in their Italian manufacturing headquarters. You can really appreciate the craftsmanship that goes into the designs. Anello means ring and the resemblance to a ring or a bracelet is evident when you look at the tap design. This is the handle and I absolutely love it. I think I'll be using this in an upcoming bathroom design. I even love these fun designs called the Origini. You can mix and match different colours. It's a great way to add more colour and personality into a bathroom. There are so many beautiful designs, it was hard to choose. But after my visit, I felt confident that the Vainty Vainty Tap was the perfect option for our office. Here it is in one of our recent golf projects in the guest bathroom. And this is the final selection I chose from Jessie for our new office. I specified one of their basins and toilets too. This is the floor plan and elevations, and this is the final mood board. You can see we're also using wallpaper from our Fermentile collection. It was such a great visit, so inspiring and informative. If you haven't been, I highly recommend a visit to the showroom in Clerkenwell. Just got back from London, had a great visit to Jesse at the showroom there. So beautiful, and it was really successful because we managed to find the taps that we want to use for the office. That was great. Um, it's been a great day. Had a really successful presentation with our client, um, enjoyed the trip to London, and enjoyed filming it with you guys. So let me know if you enjoy this kind of content, you'd like more vlogs, um, I would love to hear from you. If you don't want more vlogs, I'd also love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments what you enjoy and what you don't. Um, if you do enjoy it, then we could potentially film all the progress of the office renovations, that could be fun. Um, but if you'd like more regular updates, you can also follow us on Instagram and TikTok. I do do updates behind the scenes there as well. Um, otherwise, we've got some really good content coming our way. We've still got the final part of our golf project yet to come. Um, if you haven't seen part one and part two, they were really popular on this channel. We've had um, really lovely feedback and it was one of my best ever projects. So definitely check those out. Otherwise, take care and I will see you very soon.